Let's look at the first one. Now, the, the uh, first one is the main one. The first one is the one, it's the foundational beatitude. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on the first one and probably hardly mention the last two or three. And they're not very complicated. Most of these Beatitudes are straightforward, although they do have layers to them. They're straightforward where the newest believer can get it, but they're also multifaceted so that the most mature believer is still learning more and experiencing more in the pathway of these eight Beatitudes. I mean, most of the world is, is uh, illiterate. They can walk in them, and probably some of them are walking in them far better than some of those that are most trained. Training is not the issue. Responsiveness is the issue. Well, the first one is this issue of poor in spirit. Now, some, now this might be the most uh, confused one where folks don't really have a handle on this, but it's pretty straightforward. It is to recognize, I have here in paragraph A, to be aware of our spiritual need. To be aware of our spiritual lack. That there is more to experience. I mean, God is, Jesus has made his grace available to us. He says, it's freely yours. Now respond to me and you will experience more. Skill is not enough. Even dedication and commitment to Jesus is not enough. We need help because it takes God to love God. He says, you will need my help. So to be poor in spirit is to recognize how great our need is. Now being poor in spirit is the way into the kingdom. The day we're born again, we say we are in need of a savior. We can't save ourselves. So it's the way into the kingdom but poverty of spirit is also the way of the kingdom. It's the, it's the kingdom lifestyle. We're not just poor in spirit recognizing, I need a savior, and then we're forgiven, we're born again, now we're saved. Then for decades, we say, I have need of your help to experience all that you have freely given me. Paragraph B, we see ourselves as spiritually poor, but only in this sense, in terms of our actual experience of what is available. Now it's a paradox because on one hand, we're spiritually rich. All of the riches of grace are made available to us. We are rich in terms of our legal position before God. But in terms of our living condition, we're poor. We say on, if we're talking on one doctrine, we're rich spiritually. If we're focusing on the, our, the measure of our experience, there is so much more to experience. And our training can't make us experience it. It helps. It's not enough. Our strong personalities, that's not going to get us into that dimension of encounter with God. It's going to take... In, the Holy Spirit dialoguing with him and partnering with us each step of the way. We need the Spirit's help regularly. I'm talking about those little, small, incremental ways where we're just developing that dialogue with the Holy Spirit. We need his help to experience what is already fully ours in Christ Jesus. What Jesus did on the cross made it all available. Now we need the Spirit to engage with the Spirit, to actually walk it out in our everyday experience. Now as we do, paragraph E, the, uh, the F I mean, these kingdom activities, serving, blessing our enemies, fasting, praying, those sort of things, I have them written down there real simple. We refer to these as spiritual disciplines. Now when people hear the word discipline, sometimes they go, oh no, discipline, that's bad, no. Disciplines is the pathway to liberating our heart in love. Spiritual disciplines are the friend of the person who wants to feel and experience more in God. Now, disciplines don't earn us anything. If we pray more, we don't earn God's love at all. I've said this over and over. 
but we position our cold heart before the bonfire of his presence. I mean, you put a cold heart before a bonfire, the, the power is in the fire, not in the sitting before it. The sitting before it just accesses the fire. You know, people, when they think of prayer, they some people automatically think of earning God's love. No, you position yourself to receive the, the warmth of that fire and our cold heart gets tenderized. That frozen heart falls out, so to speak. God will give us more if we sit before him more, talk to him more. And I don't mean just sit before him in a prayer room. If we interact with him more, he will give us more. He won't love us more. He loves us the same. But I, I will feel more and I will experience more, though he doesn't love me more if I pray more. But I experience more. And I tell you, I love to experience more. And he ends the Sermon on the Mount with this very strategic passage. In Matthew 7, verse 7. He says, ask and keep on asking. In other words, talk to me and keep on talking. He said, seek and keep on seeking. That's what the verb uh, tense there is in that continuous present tense. Seek and keep on seeking. Interact with me. Knock and keep on knocking, and I will surprise you in the way I will interact back with you. So what's going on here is at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, he's saying these virtues, this lifestyle is impossible if you don't interact with me on a regular basis. Your commitment will not be strong enough. Nobody's commitment will be strong enough to change their, their emotions to release power on their heart. He's saying you have to interact with me if you're actually going to walk out these eight Beatitudes. When we look at our natural abilities, that's not enough. My natural abilities is not enough to ensure I will obey or I will serve in an effective way. It's going to take more than personality. It's going to take more than natural abilities. A lot of Times a, 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 a preacher or somebody in the marketplace, because your marketplace assignment is just as important of an assignment as an assignment of the pulpit. Whatever assignment you have or your assignment in your home as a mom, and I've said over the years, and I love to say it, I believe moms are the most effective disciplers through all of church history. The most effective disciplers are moms in the home. But let me encourage you, whether you're building a kingdom business, whether you're preaching on a, in a pulpit, or whether you're raising children in your home, it takes the anointing of the Spirit for it to work. Doesn't just take more dedication from mom. That's good, but mom's dedication will never move that little guy's heart spiritually. Never. It's going to take the anointing. It's going to take more than a gifted businessman or woman who's really focused. They know their market. They got good people skills, good leadership skills. For the anointing of the Spirit to make an impact on people, it's going to take more than skill. You can study the Bible. You can prepare sermons. You can pour yourself out on people. But without an anointing, without a spiritual dimension, we cannot impact people spiritually. What Jesus is saying here, he says, no matter whether it's your entry into the kingdom where you needed forgiveness or your ability to obey or serve me, whether a mom, whether a school teacher, you can't do the will of God without my help helping you. And I will help you if you will interact with me. You can't lead worship in the same way. You might have all the music right, but you can't release presence just by dedication and skill and getting all the best musicians on your team. Jesus is saying, you have to understand there's another dimension. It's my involvement. And if you see that, you will never be content pursuing a life of obedience or a life of impact, whether it's in your home, the marketplace, the pulpit. You'll never be content or confident imagining it will go okay without you interacting with my spirit in a daily way. A lot of guys in the business world, I mean, they're making millions and they're popular and big demand. And things are going well, unity in their company. They go, it's working. I go, a mm, little bit. It's working in that regard. 
but God has a bigger assignment for you than to make millions of dollars. He wants you to actually impact people spiritually from that position that you have as the CEO of that company. And you can't do that if you don't interact with them in a regular way. Again, whether it's a mom, businessman, businesswoman, a school teacher, a truck driver, it doesn't matter what role you have. Jesus is saying, do you understand that you are in great need of a spiritual dimension in what, your obedience, your pursuit of obedience, or in your ministry assignment? You must interact with me more in order to receive that. Let's go to paragraph D. Jesus addresses this fundamental issue of poverty of spirit to the successful, prospering church at Laodicea. Paragraph D. One of the churches of Asia Minor, which is now modern-day Turkey. This church was growing. It was popular. It was big. They were the talk of the town. Everybody was talking about them. And they said, I'm rich. They said, man, the numbers are up. People are excited. The impact is there. Momentum, money, everything. And Jesus says, you don't understand. You have all those natural, circumstantial blessings of increase, but you don't have a deeper encounter at the heart, nor do you have more effectiveness to inspire others to love me. He goes, you're actually in big need. You just don't know it. So this, I'll move on from this first beatitude, but the other seven flow out of this one. And I believe this first one is the one that's most easily neglected. Now, everybody says, oh, I'm a mess and I need more help. I mean, I don't know anybody that's, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sure I need more help. But that the casual confession, yeah, I need more help, is, is not what Jesus is talking about. Because poverty of spirit that does not actually spend our time different reaching to God and interacting with Him, it's not really poverty of spirit. I mean, everybody says, I need more help in my business, in my family, in my marriage, in my ministry, in my preaching and teaching, in my worship leading. Everyone says that, but Jesus says it doesn't. You don't really buy it until you're desperate enough. You believe it so bad, you actually spend more time dialoguing with me because you see there's no hope of success without my spirit helping you. Now, again, everybody knows that. But their lifestyle says opposite of that. Now, as I look at this one, I say, Lord, don't, you know, in my own personal life, I said, I asked the Lord, don't let me lose sight of this because I do lose sight of it. I get a hold of it for a few months. Then I lose sight of it to a certain degree. Then I get a hold of it again. Then I lose a certain hold of it. I get it back. I go back and forth over the 30, 40 years. I just, I get it, then I lose it. I get it and I lose it. And our prayer life is the measure if we really get it. Because if we don't spend time talking to God, we don't really believe we're that big in need. Only weak people change their schedule to talk to God the more. Strong people don't need to. Say, man, my worship team is going good enough. My preaching is good enough. My business is good enough. My marriage is good enough. My kids are good enough. I don't need to stop to beg in the Spirit's help because it's good enough. It could be better, of course, but it's good enough. And the Lord says, there's so much more. If you would bring me into it by consciously dialoguing more with me and taking time to do that. Scripture tells us to come boldly to the throne. That means prayer. That means talk to me more. Open your Bible and talk to me. So let us come to the throne of grace. Now the us is clearly born again believers. He's saying, you can, get, you can experience more grace if you will come and talk to me more at the throne of grace. In paragraph E and F, if we're going to grow in these eight Beatitudes, there are six temptations in paragraph E that we must resist. Jesus outlined them. Paragraph F, there's five kingdom activities we must pursue. So six things we must say no to. Five things we must say yes to. And those eight beatitudes, like flowers in the garden of our heart, they will blossom more and more and more. 